like to thank for the invitation and the opportunity to come here and show you our work. So I'm Ines Garcia. I'm working as a postdoc at EPFL in Switzerland, in particular here in the city, in Sion. And today I'm replacing a Julia because she cannot uh, attend the conference for personal reasons. So we are uh, working uh, very closely. So I will present here part of her work in a 2D, 3D hybrid perovskite for stable and efficient solar cells. So uh, the transition to green economy by 2050 is one of the main uh, challenges of this uh, century. But that time, solar energy um, can likely be one of the major electric sources covering 20% of the global energy demand. Uh, so far, silicon technology is dominating the market. However, it's required two expensive and high energy demanding fabrication methods. Uh, so uh, another uh, alternatives have been uh, studying. After the really nice uh, introduction in the previous uh, talk, I will just uh, give some uh, general uh, words. So if we uh, see the best research cell efficiencies, we can see how in the last few years, the 3D hybrid perovskite has been dominated. After only eight years of research, the efficiencies of the, base, uh, of the devices based on this material have reached efficiencies more than 23%. So these 3D hybrid perovskites are formed um, basically by three different components. Here we have the A, which is a carbon a, a organic a cation, sorry, a typically methyl ammonium, formamidinium, cesium. Also, a, the, represent here by the letter B, the metal cation, which is a typically lead. And a, other metals can be used in also lead free a, perovskite. And the X, which represents the alight. This a, material a, presents really nice a, photovoltaic properties such as high absorption coefficient, also the, poly the possibility to tune the band gap, direct photogeneration of the free carriers, long carrier diffusion lens, also efficient charge transport, and low, low trap density and run radiative recombination rate. Also, these materials are very easy to, um, to prepare in the lab, just measuring, uh, just uh, combining, sorry, the precursor solution, the organic uh, cation and the lead iodide in the corresponding solvent. It's possible to deposit them in different substrates, also flexible ones, and after an annealing at temperature lower than 100 degrees, it is possible to obtain very high crystalline quality material. I present here some of the most efficient uh, device architecture uh, based on these uh, materials. For example, we have here uh, using the, uh, a compact layer of tin oxide and a mesoporous layer, and then on the top we deposit the perovskite. We use whole transporting material, typically a spiro, and gold as a metal electrode. Uh, this uh, material can be used in other uh, different uh, device architecture, and it's possible to get really a nice efficiencies up to 21% if we combine different cations, for example, a form of medium methyl ammonium and also with, C, uh, with cesium, but always keeping the 3D structure of the perovskite. However, this material, as we were <laughs> discussing, uh, has a very important uh, challenge, which is the uh, device stability. So the perovskite is sensitive to water. So if we expose the perovskite to a humidity, uh, they tend to hydrolyze. Also, the organic cations, for example, the methyl ammonium and formamidinium, they are salt, and together with the lead iodide, are uh, highly hygroscopic. So this uh, degradation uh, can be dramatically accelerated by heating the UV or the electric field exposure. And this is an important issue in order to commercialize this uh, material. Uh, different studies have been uh, published uh, trying to, to um, uh, improve the stability of these uh, devices. 
For example, the material stability can be controlled in certain extent by using cross-linking additives which accumulate at the grain bordering acting as a passivation or water repellent uh, protection agent. Also, ionic compositional engineering uh, has been uh, used to obtain very uh, nice uh, efficiencies and also with good stability. Even in this case, it was in nitrogen atmosphere. However, another approach uh, can be followed, which is uh, the, tolerant, uh, the tolerance factor. If we take into account the tolerance factor, which is an empiric rule, very useful for, um, for the screening of the new organic cation that can be incorporated in this 3D structure, uh, there is an optimal value to keep this uh, cubic uh, 3D structure, which is between 0 0.8 and 1. However, it has been demonstrated also in our group that the inorganic layer can accommodate a slightly higher organic, uh, a slightly bigger organic uh, cations. So if we go for the maximum of tolerance factor, uh, T equal to 1, and a ratio of 2.6, what happens if we go uh, farther? If we use a cations with ratio than more than 2.6. So a larger library of different cations are open to be incorporated in this structure, forming what is called low dimensional perovskite. So an unknown family of a stable perovskite can be obtained by slicing the 3D uh, perovskite network along the inorganic planes. So we will obtain a pure 2D perovskite if we use a large organic, organic barriers. So in this case, it's a pure uh, 2D perovskite because we have only one layer of the inorganic bar, so it's n equal to 1. However, it is possible to uh, form also quasi 2D depending on the uh, number of inorganic layers, so n equal to 2, to 3, etc. Uh, so to have a general idea, we can uh, modulate the dimensionality of this uh, perovskite material, going from a 2D uh, perovskite, n equal to 1, with only one inorganic layer, uh, uh, the quasi 2D, which is called quasi 2D, to the 3D uh, perovskite. So we know that the devices based on 3D perovskite are very efficient, but however, they are not so stable. On the other side, the 2D are very stable, as uh, we can uh, see uh, here. So, but the, the transition to 2D perovskite is not so easy because we cannot just uh, prepare uh, photovoltaic devices with these uh, 2D materials because they don't present um, really an op uh, photovoltaic, uh, uh, nicely photovoltaic uh, uh, properties because they present high uh, banding energy, high bandgap, band and also uh, the um, a limited uh, charge uh, transport because of the, these um, larger organic cations. The absorption of this 2D uh, is very narrow, but however, the stability is very uh, long as we can see here, if we um, expose the, the samples to, uh, to water or other conditions. So the, the good idea would be try to combine the 3D and 2D perovskite. And then in, all, in, in only one device, we could have the efficiency uh, provided by the 3D perovskite and the stability of the 2D. So we have here a new concept of a stable and efficient 3D, 2D perovskite. So in our group, this study was uh, done combining the well-known methyl ammonium lead iodide, the 3D perovskite, with a 2D uh, perovskite uh, based on uh, a bi as organic cation lead iodide. In only one step deposition, it was possible to form a thin film of this perovskite. And after the optical characterization, it was a proof that there is a self-assembly uh, bottom up um, to the 3D uh, gradient in the devices. 
So uh, two different types of uh, device architecture were prepared. The first one includes uh, uh, an XTM, which is a Spyro uh, OMTAS, and Gold as an electrode. The XTM and the electrode were replaces, replaced by a carbon matrix in this uh, second uh, device architecture. For the first one, an efficiency very similar to uh, that uh, obtained for the 3D was obtained in the case of the uh, perovskite uh, 2D. However, the stability was improved, even until 300 hours. However, in the case of the devices with uh, the carbon matrix, a really high stability was obtained, more than uh, one year. So it was observed zero loss in the, uh, in the performances during uh, this uh, time. So it was a world uh, record, a really important result in the uh, perovskite field. Even if the efficiency is not so high, 12% in the case of the uh, devices and 11% in the case of 10 by 10 mode. So uh, it was possible to create in only one step the position this uh, gradient between 2D and 3D and we uh, prepared really a, a stable device with a, a lifetime more than a one year. So the next step was a try to engineer in the three, a 2D, 3D interfaces in order to obtain not only very stable devices, but also very efficient. So for that, we did a beautiful study trying to modulate the properties of the 2D perovskite incorporating new uh, organic barriers. So these cations were incorporated here as the organic spacer between the two uh, lead iodide layers in a pure 2D perovskite. So we synthesized these new fluorous ammonium cations because they present really a uh, water repellent properties. So we wanted to improve the, uh, uh, the stability of this uh, 2D perovskite depending on the uh, cation that we used. I would like to show you here the typical XRD pattern of 2D perovskite um, because it's rich in the low angles, as we can see here, and it was possible to modulate the optical properties of the 2D perovskite depending on the cation. And the bank up uh, was modulated from 2.9 to 2.7. Uh, also, uh, we measured the contact angle between a drop of uh, water on the top of a thin uh, film of this material. And we could see how the angle uh, go from, uh, goes from uh, 36.6 uh, grade until 95.3, uh, which is a completely hydrophobic surface. So uh, we uh, could um, give to the uh, final 2D perovskite the properties that, has the, um, that have the organic uh, cations. Also, the stability of this perovskite was uh, confirmed by measuring the, absor the absorption uh, exit on peak position of this material and also the XRD uh, pattern. It was very stable in one month or even more, but here I have the data from one month uh, in ambient condition. We decided to uh, incorporate one of these uh, cation, this uh, A43, in this uh, 2D uh, structure, but incorporate with uh, 3D in uh, devices. So for that, uh, in this case, with, uh, we deposit layer by layer. So we control layer by layer the device architecture. So first, uh, it was deposit the 3D uh, perovskite with an excess of lead iodide. On the top of uh, this layer, it was deposit the 2D. So here uh, I show you the, uh, the XRD uh, with uh, the typical uh, peak at a low angle corresponding to the pure 2D perovskite. This peak, of course, uh, doesn't appear in the spectrum corresponding to the 3D. And however, if we combine both, we can see here that uh, we have still the peak uh, corresponding to the 2D. 
also when we measure the optical uh, properties, we see a difference if we measure the device from the top and from the, the bottom. So if we uh, measure the response from the bottom, we can see here the uh, signal corresponding to the 3D perovskite. If we uh, measure the photoluminescence from the top, we can see the response corresponding to the uh, 2D perovskite and then to the 3D. So that's confirmed that this is the, uh, the type of structure that we have. So with these uh, devices, it was uh, possible to obtain very high and promising efficiency of 20%. Two different uh, 3D perovskites were uh, testing with a triple cation, cesium formamidinium and methyl ammonium, and the double cation with methyl ammonium and formamidinium. By now, we have excellent result of the stability in the case of this perovskite, that more than one uh, 400 uh, hours. And we are still waiting for this uh, nice result, and maybe we, we can get the same stability or even more as for the uh, first sample that I showed you. So with this example, we are going to very efficient but also stable devices. So finally, I would like to, to conclude um, saying that uh, we were able to, to create very uh, stable uh, devices with a lifetime more than uh, one year, incorporating this uh, carbon matrix uh, um, device architecture. Also, it was possible to tune and modulate the optical properties of the 2D depending on the organic uh, cations. And finally, it was uh, possible to create a very uh, efficient devices incorporating the new fluorinated cations. And we hope to, to have uh, the same or even higher uh, stability as for the first uh, sample. So our, our future direction uh, are uh, still working in the engineering of 2D, 3D, 2D uh, devices in order to, to obtain very uh, high, efficient, but also stable. And also we are preparing new materials for light emitting application. Uh, we have also some studies in lead free uh, solar cells. So finally, I would like to thank uh, Julia and Professor Nasiruddin and all the group at EPFL in Sion, and of course, all our collaborators and funding. And thank you for your attention.